<laughs> Hello and welcome to another week of energy and star sign readings with myself, Thomas Yonak, and my guest, Laura Jean. Yay, she's Hi. back. I will um, post a little thing about, about her website, as I always do when you're here. Thank right? you. So, um, Soul Solace. It is, yeah. yeah. See? Memory. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. We're recording the week of February the 1st to February the 7th. And as always, before we go into the star signs that we're starting with Aquarius, we're looking at the overall energy for the week ahead. Normally I'm using my guides. Funnily enough, Laura brought a deck of a uh, shamanic medicine deck and I was really drawn to it. So I really picked these cards, asked these, the guides in that deck to give me the overall energy for the week ahead. And we have um, calling and hope. What the guides are saying is, this is a week that is really important because it's the first week of February. It is really important to realize that two is the number of coming together, just as a number. It's, it's not the number one, new beginnings, this is about reconciliation um, and also internalizing teachings that have to do with situations that are close to you. So the, the number two in itself um, is quite important and obviously the, the, the months we're looking at is February. What we have is to realize that even though we live in these unprecedented times and things are dire, um, shit, she, for, for a lot of people, you know, a lot of people lose their, 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 their livelihoods, they don't know where they're going. And that's all true. And all the guides are saying is you still have a calling in the midst of it all. Look at what you came here to do. I always urge people to look into meditation or journeying. Normally, it's in my experience at least, it's not so easy to just journey with guides. Uh, unless you know how to hold them there. So med learning meditation can be really empowering, especially with regards to breathing, to actually then um, have that, that uh, journey work, if that makes sense. But here's what the guys are saying to us, all of us. In, in short, it's important to realize that, that we all came here with a purpose and it is not important to know what your life purpose is because we're all going through changes. We're all going through cycles. So knowing... Uh, where you're going can sometimes close doors because you're not looking at anything else and you need the whole picture to get to that stage. So it's one thing to know your life purpose and another to realize that you came here with a purpose and just go and be on your journey to get closer to whatever it is you came here to do. That's what the guides are saying to you is, is to look at what am I good at? What would I like to do if the world was different, and then the guides are saying, well, the world isn't different, does that mean you can't do it? Can you do it in a different shape or form? Is it possible at all to do it? So don't allow the world to dictate to you, because the other energy here that we have is hope. And that is not to say that we need, um, all of us need to have massive hope that things get better, because this isn't about getting better. This is about the hope that the universe has, that you will follow your path that you came here with, that you agreed to. So this is a time to reflect um, or, and, and really realize, okay, at the moment I'm a bit stuck because of you know, X, Y, and Z. And now I'm focusing on getting unstuck and do what I came here to do. Right? What I'm getting a lot at the moment <clears throat> at doing this, which means it would be good if you started writing. You can start automatic writing. You just Put a little piece of paper there and, 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 and a pencil or a pen and you just go into nowhere or anywhere, you know, and just start writing, automatic writing. And you might be surprised what comes out of it, right? And everybody can do it. Also remember that a lot of air of guides talk in symbolism. So if you feel like, oh, I don't know what this is, what I just drew here, that's what Google is for. You know, Google knows all, <laughs> you know, all these, all these um, search engines. What I'm saying is it's not necessarily just words that you will do because you know there's there's some geometry uh, objects mean a lot to us and and so you know like as like I said the, the planets have the shape of of a circle the circle means there's no beginning no end you know so there's loads of symbolism in it and all the guys are saying to all of us if you draw anything like it see if you can find that that symbol somewhere and have it explained to you if you can't automatically make sense so the google thing was a, was a joke because there's other things that you can find this out, but it is important that you kind of think like, oh, I don't understand what I did here and let it go because that's unfortunately what a lot of people do. You mm -hmm. don't understand immediately what's going on 
and then people don't follow up. And that's the whole point. You are going down a new path eventually, and the new path is not familiar. So don't look for, 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 for familiarity necessarily. So cut a long story short, be kind to yourself, come together with, with, with yourself, with what you came here to do, and, and don't lose faith and hope, because energetically speaking, eventually, as a, as a species, we will rebel if it doesn't, doesn't get better, because we don't want to be isolated, if that makes sense. And though this is not about the fact whether or not this is a pandemic or a scandemic, this is about the fact that people don't like to be isolated, and eventually people will not tolerate it anymore. Um, but there's no aggression here in February. So what they're saying to you is don't let the frustration of being in this energy get to you. That was the old energy for the month of February. They uh, draw that out quite a bit. Um, and now we're going to the first star sign, which is Aquarius. Cast for that. Same ones. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, okay. <clears throat> So for Aquarius, we have the card for soul retrieval, which is about reclamation. And we also have the two of wands. So <clears throat> I see this as definitely a period to reflect, reflect on uh, what has been um, the previous year, the things that you might have learnt and to um, to really come to a place that feels like a, a zero point so you're looking ahead with hope like um like within the overall energy it's a space to sit and reflect and i think with this soul retrieval it's it's learning to after all the chaos um what you really need again which parts of you um that need to come back forward all to do with calling again you know you may have um, let go of um, a passion or a favorite thing that you used to do because you know um, survival instincts have kicked in way more so then there's a period to kind of sit and reassess what has gone on which parts of you you might need to encourage and bring back because there's this energy of looking forward and coming into a new journey so it's a very much similar to the um, the overall energy it's so that you can look forward and perhaps sit and um, evaluate and maybe write down, um, especially in tune with your feelings. So rather than writing intentions, I want to create these goals because it's difficult to sometimes see that. Um, look at it as an aspect of how would you like to feel again? What things would you like to experience in your life? And you don't need to put a time scale on it, that it's just reminding yourself and having that that written down perhaps and maybe setting those intentions of this is what I need back in order to feel equilibrium and then you have this recorded energy of how you know eventually you might find yourself catching up with that when you reflect back in a few months time so you kind of already start to put those wheels in motion regardless of how you're going to do it but definitely reassessing what it is that you need okay okay <laughs> <coughs> and I feel like coughing, so I'm going to go and get some get some water, which means I can't be doing the next last time because I need to drink something. If you could please do Pisces. Yeah. Thank you. And I, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have a card of altar, which is the altar, which is about honouring, and also the Wheel of Fortune. So this again, very similarly, is um, to do with uh, completion of a cycle, so to speak. So it, it can mean that there's, there's a change coming and with every cycle that ends, a new one must begin. So with um, the altar, this is again specifically um, using some time to get really familiar with what is important to you and this could mean specific things places objects and um, also loved ones that have passed there's an energy of feeling that if 
there's people that you have missed or people that are no longer in your life um, to be able to remember them and remember them in the way of the teachings that they've brought you and the lessons that you have learned from them there's this kind of energy definitely of for some of you seeking their support and that maybe a guide will come to you maybe this is a time when you will um, have a loved one or the energy of a loved one around you and I think they are urging you to let go of certain aspects of what happened in the past when they were around perhaps but also to just honour the relationship and all the things that it taught you and to recognise that you can let go of something within that so that the new cycle can begin. Okay, thank you very much. That was Pisces, my star sign. Going into Aries, we're looking at the week of February the 1st to the 7th, 2021. There we go. For Aries, you have the dance of inspiration and the dancer of frustration. Dancer really means pussyfooting. You're not too sure about what to do, so you sort of, you know, but you're but you're in you're you're in flux. You're in movement. You're not you're not exactly on standstill. And what the guys are saying is, uh, inspiration will come to you this week, but you need to see it because next to the dance of inspiration, you have the dance of frustration. So the more you feel, oh crap. <laughs> the more you feel it's not really working, <clears throat> the less you can motivate yourself. Really, really important to motivate yourself. It is really easy. I always say that to people, all you need to do is remember a time when you, when you had no care in the world. Make this your childhood. Make this your teenage years. And then just play a song from that time. Because, you know, one note of that song will bring back, back a thousand memories mm -hmm. that will flood you with like, wow, wasn't that awesome? <laughs> and then with, the, with that energy you stop being frustrated. Really important, there are really cheap, easy tools out there to create this in a, in a heartbeat. And music is one of those things. Mm -hmm. So um, it's actually short and sweet for, for, for Aries. All they're saying is the universe is already trying to show you what you would thrive at, right? Things that you can do, where, um, things where you feel maybe you haven't even looked at that yet. And all the guys are saying is because your energy tends to be low at the moment, a lot of the stuff isn't happening. So, you know, um, do that. My feeling is, is, is um, because they showed me childhood, is to wake up your inner child and say like, yeah, I'm going to be lighthearted and just, you know, go with the flow. That was Aries going into Taurus. Okay. <clears throat> yes, this really resonates with me at the moment because I'm Taurus. Um, there is a need for some focus, so definitely a time to um, maybe seek advice, I'm getting to seek advice, especially if there's projects or things that you've been working on that you may have been um, a bit a bit worried about completion or find that there might have been a bit of stagnancy. I think now is a really perfect time to push ahead with ideas and <clears throat> anything that is based on projects and definitely seeking advice for sure and this focus is to do with mental clarity um having having time and space to dedicate towards towards specific things and not allowing any distractions to come in because there's this time i mean i believe mid February we're going into a Mercury retrograde so there'll be a three-week period following this not so long after this when that will be a lot of introspection and you know things won't move forward so I think this is to capitalize on the energy of completing things and completion of certain projects and also asking for any advice if clarity is needed over you know work situations or anything that you want to move forward on. Okay thank you very much <clears throat> that was Taurus going into Gemini Gemini, your week feels stagnant. Your week feels there's not all that much I can do. <laughs> and <coughs> all the guides are saying is 
you would not be mistaken to think that because you have the Canada goose and the turkey. The Canada goose is basically a symbol for, um, you know, patience. And the turkey is a symbol of being misunderstood. Right? So what the guides are saying is you're not quite there yet in expressing yourself and even feeling what it is you feel can change and even if you know what what ought to change in your life there's a lot of um i don't even know how to express this to change this right so there's a bit of um <clears throat> reluctancy even to look into change so what the guides are saying is and this is the good thing here <coughs> for the for the week february the first of the seventh take things slow right don't rush anything don't think you need to rush anything at this point in time but also sounds a bit harsh Choose your battles. And there are situations in your life, or maybe even people in your life, that don't listen. They listen to respond. They don't really listen to what is coming. They just um, want to push your buttons because that's all they know how to do best. And so you will feel misunderstood because they know how to get you. And they will put in there, from their point of view, they, they like you in a certain corner. And it's not all people we're talking about. Whoever is um, Gemini this week and finds that video, all the guides are saying is there's an element of that in your life because it is my, my experience and my belief that whatever we record here, it is the people that need to find it, that ultimately find it. <clears throat> and all the guides are saying is because com communication is not going to be very good this week for Gemini, don't explain yourself, but step back from it all a little and don't rush things. Right. Also, with regards to the mentioned um, retrograde, mm. it is harder for people to communicate properly in retrograde. And when you look at it, even though, yes, it is true, we all we come from the stars, so we are, we are quite affected by the things that happen in the universe. But at the end of the day, when you look at it logically, retrograde is a, um, an optical illusion. There's no planet that goes backwards, it just looks like it. <laughs> so what the guides are saying is, not everything where you feel I'm super stuck here, means that you're super stuck here. It just looks at it when you look at it mm. and, and take things for, for, for granted or even for, for uh, carte blanche, you know, uh, face value. Um, <clears throat> just remember, this is a week for you to just be and not explain yourself and express yourself simply because the energies around you are not that welcoming. Okay? I know it's not the best um, messages you can have, but there's not much we can do, really. <clears throat> Going into Cancerians, this is Cancer. <clears throat> Interesting. So, um, the area that has come up is definitely about work. And I think... We have the card of the West, which is Purge, which is also the energy of water. So there's definitely a cleansing of sorts that needs to happen. Um, I'm getting that somebody is feeling restricted in terms of creative freedom um, within their work situation. Um, and it may be that it may be that there's some truths that need to be exposed to the light. This is what I'm kind of getting, the specific message that somebody needs to have a conversation with somebody uh, in terms of their needs not being met or not being heard within a work situation. And um, this uh, vocalising of these things and maybe coming to some, some agreements or actually... With this purge, it might be that you have to just literally abandon or disregard certain aspects to do with work because it's not allowing you to be as free and creative as you want. So these things definitely need to be um, illuminated. There needs to be some light shone on them and it can no longer stay in the realms of um, just within and feeling frustration or things that, you know, your needs not being met. Things definitely need to be aired and vocalised for there to be some new energy coming in within a work situation. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> Going into Leos, Leos sometimes forget what a powerful star sign Leo mm. actually is mm. because, you know, you are 
some people, this is your your, your time, you're, you know, born in, in July mostly, kind of thing, August kind of thing. Um, so what the guides are saying to you is, you are the star sign of renewal, just like water is. Fire is a really powerful um, mm. um, energy of letting go and renewing. And all the guides are saying is, you have the Maze Mother and the Great Spirit. So the Maze Mother is saying, the field that is a, that, that, that you see, your surroundings are your playground. You can still make a lot of changes, you can still make a lot of things work because no matter where you go, you could then decide I'm gonna root myself here and something will grow. So <clears throat> I have, the feeling I'm getting is, and I say that a lot, we have, we have a lot of overlapping energies oftentimes. And when it comes to Cancer and Leo, they hardly ever are overlapping. They sort of call it, they come next to one another and they're like very different from one another. I was kind of mm. think, and, and, and in, in most cases, because I mean, obviously when you record these videos, you pay attention to these things. Um, cancer always gets the worst deal with regards to I mean, Leo or Cancer. Leo is always like, yeah, I don't, I don't have that problem. And it's just the way it is. It doesn't mean Leo's, Leo's um, world is always perfect or Cancerians have always have a bad time. But there is some truth in, in realizing that there's some star signs that are a bit more burdened than others mm. and leos you're not that star sign you just need to realize because that's the other problem that you have because you feel you need a lot of safety you need a lot of um you know you don't want to be enclosed and encroached on coach on and so you are having issues when people are too much in your space and sometimes you can't quite express it as well and all the guides are saying is express yourself Kindly, because Leos, right? I mean, look at look at the animal that represents you, <laughs> right? It's a bloody lion, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> you don't have to pussyfoot around stuff. People know when when you say something that you mean it. All the guides are saying to you is, um, remember, within the confinement of space that is going on right now, where we can't really go all the places we want to, which obviously causes a, a stress to people. Mm. Leos find a way. And you have the great spirit, which means now is the time to take that step back and say like, okay, well, I can't change what's going on out there, right? But I can decide not to get annoyed about it, right? It sometimes makes no sense to watch the same message on the TV on five different channels. All it does, it brings you down. Yeah. You know, you have heard it once, Right, move on from it. Do the best you can within the 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 the, the, the um, situation as it presents to you, and that's nothing that, that that Leos are urged to do this week. Don't overly keep thinking about the same stuff all the time, because you have the Great Spirit, which means this is the time to realize that the universe supports you. But and this is the the main message here for Leo. The feeling that I'm getting is for the first week of February is for you to, to um, like the over energy uh, suggested, is to sit back, manifest, write things down, and write things, get things off your chest in writing. Because as you write, you express it, but you're not arguing with someone, you're not hitting them over the head with it, if that makes sense. So this is a time where Leos probably do need some uh, me time, some alone time to, to uh, pull it off, right? That was that going into Virgo. Okay. <clears throat> so we had the, the same card from the overall energy, which is hope. And we also have growth and the Ten of Swords. <clears throat> the sense that I'm getting is something uh, certainly needs to end because it it's stunting your growth there's definitely a um i'm really drawn towards the the dark sky within here and it feels like a heaviness on the head i actually had a yawn coming out just before i i, I came into doing the cards and it felt like all oh, very stifling so there's this sense of i think perhaps you know something that's not right for you um because it's becoming a real burden it feels heavy to carry and <clears throat> I am seeing this energy of lifting this dark cloud away so that the sun can shine and so that the hope and the prayer, the hope within can start to just come out again because there's um, 
there's growth and lessons in making this choice for yourself whatever the situation is um, it could be a very repeated nature of where you might have taken things on before or got yourself into situations and this time you are seeing it before it's causing you any damage so that that acknowledgement that comes forward a little bit sooner means this is this is wonderful period of growth because the way you choose to deal with it and let go of things and um, how swiftly you do it and this is really um, self-empowering and then this will make way for a huge rise in hope for your own path and for what comes after that yeah okay thank you very much that was Virgo going into Libra <clears throat> for Librans your life at the or this week <laughs> at least it's easy peasy lemon squeezing. I mean, it's really one of those things. You have the screech owl and the sparrow hawk. The screech owl is basically the animal that's like, oh, there's a barn, it's all mine. <laughs> right? It doesn't matter what the, what, what the state of the barn is, it's all mine. Right? I can make anything work because I can see everything. Right? And I don't have to talk about it either. I can just be calm and I claim everything. This is the first message for you uh, for, for, for this week. Um, claim your truth, claim your space. And then, because you have the sparrow hawk, which uses the upthrust of the air to glide, go with the flow. You don't have to express, or rather explain, anything to anyone. You don't have to explain yourself at all. Right? That doesn't mean you walk all over people. It just means like you determine, say, no, this is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it. And the people that say it can't be done, the answer is always the same, watch me. Right? As they're saying, like people shouldn't be, you know, people that think it, things can't be done shouldn't be in the way of the people doing it. Mm. Right? <clears throat> All the guys are saying to to um to Libras this week, just look at what you got and remember that you can make this bigger by having faith in your abilities first and foremost, and then just go with the flow. Don't panic about things that haven't manifested, that haven't happened yet. Right. Short and sweet for Libra, going into Scorpio. So we have um, the conch shell, which is the calling, which is, again, another card, the card from the beginning, from the overall energy. Um, and we also have the Queen of Swords with the friendship card. So... What I'm getting is that there are there are connections that are being made now or that might have been recently made, which can hold really beautiful opportunity. Um, there's this kind of need for um, what I'm getting two mind two minds to come together. So we're going reflecting on the two again. There's definitely this element of partnership through friendships, which something can be created, and there's potentially something really either um, abundant or even just creative passions but there's certainly a sense of this coming together and having conversations allowing these two minds to um, to collaborate and to share because there's something which can be merged and created within that space that's it okay. thank you very much Deborah Scorpio going into Sagittarians and then we only have Capricorn left <clears throat> this is how fast we are, you know, like, phew, <laughs> clockwork. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> going into Sagittarius. For Sagittarians this week, February the 1st to the 7th, there's a part of here things like, and I've just had it, right? And my feeling is, because they're excluding work, they're showing me, <laughs> it's really funny, they're showing me a trucker, a truck driver, um, which my brother is, who is a Sagittarian, but it's not about him, because he's leaving the truck, closing the bloody door and walks away. Which means this is not about work. They normally do that. They, they whatever imagery I can understand, they give that to me oftentimes. Mm -hmm. so anyway, they just did. So what the guys are saying is, for Sagittarians, this message is not about work-related issues. This is about relationships. It's not. So here, here's how it works. If you are a Sagittarian, this is like, which I have been, which I was in a relationship, <laughs> kind of thing. You have still relationships with people, with situations, and with yourself. It's not always the intimate relationships that, that, that we're reflecting on when we talk about relationships, if that makes sense. Some people don't understand at times that you have a relationship 
with yourself, the way you look at yourself changes your energy. Therefore, how you look at yourself is important. And when you see what you do to yourself as if another being did it to you, and you will probably then think, well, this will happen to me in real life, I'll protect myself. That's, when, that's how you learn to, <clears throat> to not do things to yourself because you have now stepped back and created a physicality for what you do to yourself. Right? Mm -hmm. Cut a long story short. <clears throat> what the guys are saying is to Sagittarians is this is the week where you need to realize two things. Number one, you need your boundaries clear cut. If you feel that you do too much for people, let them know. If they reject the idea that you decide to do less, then they probably have never been your friends to begin with. Really, really important because you need to... The feeling that I'm getting is, is that you almost ask people, could I please do less? It doesn't work that way. I always say that to people a lot, <clears throat> especially in readings. If you cooked for me five times a week, I would let you. Mm. It's that simple because everybody becomes an opportunist, right? Mm. And I can't cook. You saw what I'm saying? Is, you know, <laughs> so, so I just can't. <laughs> so what that means is if you then said I can't do Monday, instead of being grateful for Tuesday to Friday, I'll probably go, oh, what am I supposed to do on Monday? And if I know how to push the buttons, you kind of go like, oh, poor Thomas needs to eat, right? So I'm going to do the Monday, right? Normally you would say, like, you know what? You could do with a little less food. Leave me alone, right? <laughs> maybe, maybe, you know, maybe not quite as harsh, but the point is you are, you are under no obligation to do. But, but when you give, people take. It doesn't make them bad people. They just get used to you giving. And when you then, for whatever reason, can't give anymore, they need time to readjust. But you're not making it or we're not making it about them. It's just realize that some people, when you feel like they now reject you, it's because they haven't, they, they never had to deal with you not doing things that you did for them. Right? So that's what I'm getting. You need to, first and foremost, make sure you have enough time to recharge your batteries. That's important. Recharge your batteries is really, really important for um, Sagittarians this week. And then you have the Eagle, which means as you do that, new opportunities, because you have made space and freed up time, will come to you. So on the whole, it's not that difficult. This is just saying, you know what? I'm a bit tired here, I've done enough, or, there's nothing that I'm getting, I've said my piece three times, right? You're obviously not getting it, I'm not going to say it another 15 times, right? There's another scenario that the guys give me, is that you're, you're uh, or, or some of you Sagittarius at least, are these people that, you know, you want to help, and so you explain it 15 times. You know, it doesn't make a difference. If the person does get it the third time around, don't hold their hand on the way down. It sounds horrible sometimes, but it is important. You didn't come here. Not, none of us came here to rescue people. We're here to give advice. We're here to help. But ultimately, it is your own responsibility to your solutions. And that's important to also teach people that you're responsible for your things. And if you feel like, you know, I've been giving so much help, and I've been doing so much and they're just not getting it. Tough luck. Then they're just not getting it. And sometimes people that you love dearly must make their own um, bad experiences for them to, to come out stronger. It's not easy. There's, you know, people always look at love and light. There's another side to all this. You know, how can we see love and light if we don't understand the darker sides? <clears throat> and in a weird way, they're just as important, the bad times, the, the weird times, are just as important as the good times, right? You just have that trick, humans. You know, you don't, you don't remember that stuff. You just, you know, like, let me just think about the positive stuff, which is not a bad thing, but sometimes it means we're hiding pain inside that eventually wants out, right? So that's all I'm getting for Sagittarians. All you guys are saying is, please remember, when you step back from doing too much, New opportunities can come to you. Things that you really came here to do can then finally unfold for you. Right? Okay, that was that. Going to the last star sign of the week. This was the week of February the 1st to the 7th. Laura, thank you so much for doing this again with me. It was awesome. And now we're looking into the last star sign of the week, which is Capricorn. So this is, uh, this is quite interesting because we have the world card here. <clears throat> which is 
um, the symbol of this kind of, again, end of cycles, um, a completion energy. Um, and because Capricorn has obviously just come through to their new solar return, many Capricorns have just had their birthdays and they're coming into a new year. So uh, we also have the Ancestor card, which is Wisdom. So um, a little nod again back to the, uh, the, the overall energy, which is the kind of reflection. And I do believe, again, that writing and some sort of journaling, maybe reviewing the year that you've had. And then um, particularly we have a strength card here as well, which it's telling me two things. Um, one, that with the ancestors that you're really, really well protected right now and that you probably are feeling in that really uh, that strength, the renewal of coming into this new cycle of your of your uh, solar return. And um, it's that just to really capitalize on that and go even that much, that little bit further so recognizing the skills that you've acquired over the last whatever lessons it is you've gone through recognizing the real differences on on who you are as a person and what you have gained and the stability that you've gained and the strength card there's another little sign about roots so I don't know if there are people that are uh, looking to move or have made a significant new <coughs> beginning, um, maybe, you know, whatever that looks like, a new job, a new relationship, or you've left one and there's been an ending and a new beginning. There's something about roots, which is um, they needed to tend to. I was kind of drawn to the pink candle as well. So there's a little bit of that um, just to be, even though you feel uh, the strength, and uh, just to take that little bit of time um, to uh, just really get down into the roots of where you are now, because the stronger the roots are, then the more longevity that you're going to have to be able to see through and keep going with this new energy. Okay, thank yeah. you very much. <coughs> and as always, guys, guys, <laughs> please share. Please share this widely and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, follow the, the Facebook page so you always up to date with what we're doing and what's going on and always as well you can leave comments on the youtube page and on the facebook page you know which helps us sorting things out because i obviously recorded two episodes um, on my new table and um been told that the the, the the rework that comes of it can be quite distracting which right and i, and I knew there was a rework, i just didn't know how it comes across so knowing this meant I don't have to record there and everything is better. Sometimes feedback is really, really important, right? Yeah. So, okie dokie, that's all we have time for. See you next week. Bye. Bye.